Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today I am going to be shielding the cavity of this uh, guitar here and I am going to be using some of this uh, shielding paint stuff and a brush. Now, we started doing this um, we, we started doing this technique a while ago after we took a bunch of guitars that are known to be shielded correctly and known to be very, very quiet when not being played. And one of the things that we discovered was that <clears throat> some of them had uh, shielding paint, some of them had uh, foil, some of them had conductivity from uh, all the way around, like if you were to touch with a, with a probe on this end and over here on this end, uh, you would get conductivity. And um, some of them were very hastily done and still worked very, very well. All of them had humbuckers, by the way. Um, so there's lots of ways to shield stuff. And one of the things that we came up with was um, the, uh, the wire going from uh, to the jack should probably be shielded wire. Um, the other thing is that the, uh, um, the shielding paint works just as well as the shielding foil. And all that shit about you have to make sure you have conductivity from one point of the cavity to the next is utter crap. So I can I can hear it now. There's gonna be feverish typing in the comment section. People going, oh no, you absolutely have to have conductivity and Faraday cage, this, that, and the other. Uh, we have discovered that that is absolutely not true. And um, one of the things that we do is we actually put our shielding paint on and then spray sanding sealer over it. Because when you think about it, a shield isn't to keep stuff from going out of the guitar. It's to keep some things from coming into the guitar and then going back through and, and going through your amplifier. So if you look at a picture of a Faraday cage, it's got a big open hole in it. So there's some parts that aren't conductive. And by the way, it's a Faraday cage, not a Faraday box. So um, anyway, this is the way we do it. If you guys want to do it a different way, cool if you if you don't cool um so anyway let's jump right in we're going to be using this stumac stuff and um and we're going to paint it on so let's get started i mean enough with the bullshit talk let's get to work so one of the neat things about this um this shielding paint is that it's really really easy to use one of the not neat things about it is that it um it kind of gets everywhere and when it's dry, you know, it kind of flakes off in your hand um, and, and kind of makes a mess. So it's really a cool thing to put the, um, to put the sanding sealer directly over the, um, uh, the shielding paint. The other thing about this stuff is once you move past the notion that everything has to be conductive and um, then you realize, well, hey, man, I could put this on and, uh, and spray paint over it and no one's going to know. No one's going to care. And it won't be all fluffy-offy in my hands. Um, the other the other uncool thing about this stuff is that it can get everywhere. So if you um, if you get any boogers on your finish, then you have to get it off. And so if you just do it before, it's clean, it looks good, and if you have any mistakes, you can clean them up. So I know that there are some companies that actually spray shielding paint on. One of the ones that we uh, that we used in our our test was the um, uh, a Paul Reed Smith that uh, like didn't even it's like they just sort of smeared some on there with a brush and and that was that was good. If you guys have a Paul Reed Smith, go check pull the pull the cavity cover and see what it looks like. Um, so we man we, we looked at some high end guitars too some that had like a, well one of them was a Kiesel one was a Paul Reed Smith actually the Kiesel one was not like super high end it was one of their um, like mid grade ones but very very nice looking shielding uh, it was the foil kind 
Uh, then there was some like there's some really high end stuff that we looked at. Like I say, the Paul Reed Smith was probably the um, um, the the second least expensive guitar we looked at. There was some stuff that like these German companies. You know how the Germans are. Man, those guys have figured out ways to make it to make it look super cool. So this guitar is actually going in to get spray later today, and Chris is even going to let me do it. Like I said, sometimes Chris lets me shoot sealer. So guys, this is about as easy to do as, um, as it gets. I used to like to use um, the, uh, the foil, and I would use either the copper or the aluminum, and uh, but now this is my all-time favorite technique. The only downside is I gotta remember to do it. And it looks nice and clean too when it's all done, you know? And I think, I think that's what people really want to see more than anything is they want the cavity to look good. Um, that's what I think. So just take your time. And like I said, if you, uh, See, I actually got some on the uh, on the finish there. We can just go ahead and scotch bright that off before we go into sealer. And no one will ever know. Whereas if we did this after, then um, it, would, it would make cleanup less of a breeze. Okay. Almost done here, y'all. Look, there, I got I got a buttload of it on there that time. And this brush is sort of like, it's like a little tiny uh, mop. <laughs> I'm just sort of sopping this crap in there. But it's gonna be cool here in a second. You'll see. And remember, I don't care if I've got conductivity all the way around, as a matter of fact, um, I don't think that matters one bit. So there's our cavity, and we're going to clean up some of this stuff, and then we'll take this guitar into seal, and we'll be good. Okay, so I took a little bit of sandpaper and just sort of went around the um, the area that needed to be cleaned up, where my sea or my um, my shielding paint kind of got a little bit onto the uh, top, and then when I uh, when this stuff dries, like I said, we're going to put it into uh, a course of sealer and all this stuff will get nice and covered up and so it won't be that kind of powdery um, metal stuff that flakes off in your hand so that will be super cool so um, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below about why my technique is awesome or why you think your technique is better and um, if you don't think that my uh, uh, shielding paint trick is going to work. I would like to know why you think so. And you shouldn't just use things like, well, if you look up Faraday Kit, no, actually give me a real reason. I want to know your reason. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys cool stuff like this. But if you can't do Patreon, we totally get it. Just share the video as many places as you can think of and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. I